uh, Jordan, to some extent Turkey, in 2014-15, that we have now what you describe as a European, quote-unquote, migration crisis. Look, there's a simple truth here, which is that the poorest countries in the world, countries like Bangladesh, Uganda, Kenya, they are hosting literally millions of refugees. The European numbers that you have rightly reported show that they're actually on a steep downward trend. And what we have is much closer to a political division than a policy crisis. In policy terms, it's clear that Europe needs to clear the backlog of people who are already in Europe, process their cases. Yeah. That's what the Italians, but, in part, are very, very annoyed about, along with the Spanish but, but, and but, the Portuguese. And it, but migration has paid a political dividend for these political parties and populist parties. That you cannot deny, and you can say uh, of course, the issue is less than it perhaps was in 2015. Look at Greece. It was nearly a million. It's 12,500 this year. The, 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 the pockets have changed. The problem is here. But it doesn't look like that to people that you perhaps heard in John Sweeney's film who are fearful of migration, who don't understand it, who see they're taking the jobs away. Those concerns, presumably, weren't given enough credence at the time. Well, I think that's a very good point. Europe has been late to this party. The Pope went to Lampedusa in 2014 and said that the rest of Europe was suffering from what he called the globalization of indifference. The truth about the people in Calabria is that they feel that Italy, under the Dublin regulation, has not just registered the uh, asylum seekers who've arrived, it's also had to uh, put, up, put them up for the whole of the period that they've been waiting for their cases to be processed. And there's a very legitimate case that Greece, Spain and Portugal, uh, and uh, Italy, I beg your pardon, the three main countries uh, who host most of the registration in Europe have not been given the help that they could have expected from other European countries. Obviously, Germany stepped up, but their central demand is for a more effective, more integrated but European policy. And it seems to me that's the right thing to ask but for. But we don't have, we don't have, a, we don't have a consensus. Be. And I want to bring in Eva Kali. Uh, good evening. You've been able to join us now. I mean, looking ahead to the summit on Sunday, it looks well nigh impossible to think that there will be one single EU policy on migration. The problems are so many in different countries, north, south, different coalitions of the European Union. Hello. Uh, yes, this is true. So first of all, the problem is that we have different approaches. Uh, I can speak on behalf of the European Parliament. I do believe we have the best possible approach. Since it's a global phenomenon, it needs a long-term therapy. It's here to stay, this problem. So we cannot just avoid the discussion or find you know, uh, measures that will not affect everybody. Um, so we need uh, a common approach. I do believe that um, the European Parliament and the, and the Commission, they are different. They have a different approach than the Council. But I do hope uh, at the end of June we're going to have, uh, we're going to start, you know, uh, approaching each other's uh, point of view because we do need to, to reform Dublin yes. 4. And I want to stay with you because actually if you look at Italy though, you know, both the Five Star Movement and the League came to power on the back of an anti-migrant policy. They're not going to turn away from that now. They are hardline now. They're talking about burden sharing, but it's much less likely that they'll burden share the same way that France and Germany will burden share because that's not where their power base is. So whatever suits them on Sunday is not going to suit the Netherlands and is not going to suit France and Germany. But, you know, the fact that uh, Europe left us alone, Greece and Italy, uh, basically to deal with the flows of migration and refugees, has led to these populistic governments to our countries. So uh, the impact has directly uh, hit uh, our countries and the lack of solidarity there. So we cannot expect to be uh, to have a Europe à la carte. We cannot expect to have only economic benefits. We do have to share responsibility and so solidarity. So I do believe the Visegrad, uh, Visegrad countries have to take these responsibilities too and not just economic benefits. And this is where we have to, yeah. uh, to move Let towards. We, uh, David Miliband, I mean, we're talking about illegal you know, migration here, not legal migration. And I wonder if this issue, it used to be the idea that the, there was going to be ec an economic crisis that was going to actually pose an existential threat to the EU, that actually this crisis of possible illegal immigration might actually sink the EU. What do you think about that? I don't think it needs to sink the EU, and I don't think it will sink the EU. I also think it's really important to remember that what you call illegal immigration is simply people exercising their legal right to claim asylum. You're repeating 
what President Trump says here in the United States, where he describes anyone of them, who crosses some the border. Some of them are economic migrants. Some of them are no, economic no, migrants. No, well, ha hang on, hang on. It's it's a legal right under the successive conventions that all European countries have signed, and actually the United States have signed, that people have the right to cross a border and claim asylum. Their case should then be processed quickly and efficiently. Germany does it within uh, eight weeks. If they then show that it's not safe for them to be returned home, then they should be properly integrated in society. If they are safe to be returned home, then they need to be returned home. But it's wrong to say that it's illegal to claim asylum. And I think it's really important that we recognize that in a European continent of 550 million people, the largest, richest single market uh, in the world, the arrival of so far this year 41,000 people should not in policy terms bring down the European Union. There's absolutely no reason why the requirement of Germany to ensure that there is proper documentation of people coming in and out is not matched with the Italian, Spanish and uh, Greek demand that cases be processed effectively and that the responsibility be shared across Europe. That's the right thing to do. Thank you both very much indeed.